So, I don't know if any of you noticed this. Um, I, I lovingly refer to this big guy right here. He's not actually one of the sons of Anak. He's a grandson of Anak. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are Bible readers, you know that's the giant crowd out there in the Bible, right? So, hey, before I do that, uh, before I introduce him, uh, was this in the ladies' room, the ladies' bathroom? Someone left a set of keys. Well, back here, Missy, what a time. I could really take advantage of Marcia's niece right now. All right, come here. Come here. I won't do that, but come here. Come on. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Uh, you know how honorary your Uncle Dave is, right? So, so uh, this guy, everybody say, uh, we, love you, we love you, Richard. So, Richard and Desley made this home church. Uh, we've been connected with them for quite a while now, and uh, I've done their wedding, and, and they made this their home church about six months ago. have been serving in ministry, and he'll tell you some more about that. Uh, but such a call, such a heart. Um, he's a he's he's a, he's he's only 27 years old. What do you think he's going to look like when he actually gets full grown? Right? I mean, he's a <laughs> he's a pup, man. I was, it's uh, honestly good. It's the only wedding I ever done when I left with a crick in my neck. It's like, <laughs> do you, Richard, take Desley? <laughs> Come on, Dad, stand up here by me, girl. She makes me feel tall right here. See, right here, right here. This is Desley. Give Des a hand. We love you, Des. Yeah. Is Richard's better half, and he looks like a big old tough guy. She knows how to, you know, how many of you ladies know what I'm talking about, right? All right. So um, one of the things that um, God has allowed me the, the, such a privilege to do in the last 20-plus um, years, we've been raising leaders up in Westside, and so I'm so honored to, uh, on Sunday nights to um, be able to, take leadership principles and ministry principles and begin to teach this younger generation. And so this is some of the fruit of that. You're going to be blessed. And we have so many more you guys know that you get to hear from time to time. And so um, this big guy, let me tell you the truth about him now. He's got a bigger heart. And that's the truth. Um, he's got a really big heart for you, a really big heart for God, his family, for our community. And um, I can't wait to see what all God uh, does with him in, in the days and weeks and months and years to come. He loves you. He loves Westside. And this is what I say about all of that group that I get over there on Sunday nights. Um, he is a difference maker for this generation. And that's a big deal. Would you guys make Richard Forshe our middle school... Our middle school youth leader, pastor, I don't know. There's so many of them over there. I don't know what title to give you on all of that. But anyway, I love you, son. Now, there's a picture, right? The human being. Hey, if you got a problem with me, take it up with him, right? Thank you, baby. Thank you, guys. It is awesome to be here uh, this morning. Service is awesome. I, uh, I'm excited. Uh, to just be a part of this, uh, to be a part of Westside. You know, uh, my name is Richard Forsey. That's what uh, Dave was telling me. Um, I am not from uh, here. I'm actually from uh, what I call mosquito infestation and uh, cornfields and cotton fields. That's where I'm from. Hashtag the boot hill of Missouri. And so uh, that's where I am from. I have an amazing family that is here with me today. One is asleep and one is not. Uh, my beautiful wife right here is Desley, and then the one that is passed out, which is probably what I'll be doing for too long. Uh, and her name is Emery. She is a year and a half old. And uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that God has brought us here. Um, you know, growing up, uh, it was always, you know, I wasn't raised, you know, in a quote unquote church family. Uh, we didn't go to service all the time. Uh, you know, when I stand up here, I come from a, a point of view and a perspective 
that is just real and that is transparent. Um, I'm not going to come up here and be your Bible scholar and, and, and be the person that, that, that throws scriptures at you. I'm a person that is real, coming from a real circumstance and real situations, and, um, and I'm praising God for it because he's taken me and lifted me out of uh, situations and circumstances. And, and so I'm forever blessed and I'm forever thankful. And before I ever begin today, um, I want you to, I want everyone in here just to, to, to view this facility, this building as a hospital. This is a, this is a spiritual hospital. You know, whenever, when you come to church, it's not you're coming to church with a whole bunch of people that are perfect. You're not coming to a church with a whole bunch of people that they just got it figured out. You're coming to a church that I'm broken, you're broken, he's broken, she's broken, they're broken, and we all come together broken, and we all come together keeping each other accountable, and we love each other, and we're there for each other, and otherwise known as the body of Christ. And so if you're in here today, I just felt in my spirit that's the, whenever I, before I came up here, the word that kept hitting me was hospital, 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 hospital. And this is a hospital. This is a hospital that we are all the same. We're all the same. We've all walked different paths. And we're going to talk today about a vessel. And, and we're all broken vessels. And uh, we're going to talk about the significance of that. And so... Man, in my, in my spirit, um, for the past month or so, I, I have been praying and, and seeking God as to what God has for the service, you know, because whenever I was coming over, I was like, man, I ain't never spoke from the West Side and all these people. I was like, I ain't trying to come up there and just like, now I have a clue what to say. And, you know, and so I was like, man, God, you got to give me something. And so I've just been praying and praying and praying, and God has not shaken this word off of my spirit and that word is sanctions. And, you know, D.L. was talking about a month ago, about, I think it was three, four weeks ago, and he was talking about, you know, everything going on in the world and how, you know, there were sanctions being placed on people for economical reasons, and, and basically they were cut off economically. And, and, and then through that, through the target of the sanctions, basically the inflation, and then that's where you kind of get an imbalance. And so through the imbalance, I was like, that's cool. You know, growing up, my dad you know, has taught me so much uh, biblically and historically, and we never went to church together. Um, and um, I, I, always, I always, you know, he, he quizzes me about stuff that happened historically, and I'm like the world's worst with history. Like, I couldn't tell you what happened in 1914. I'm glad you can, but I can't. Um, <laughs> and so... You know, he, he always tells me, like, you know, do you understand the significance of history? And I'm like, no, like that happened back then. Today's today. I yeah. don't really think I need to know. And he's like, the significance of history is so that history doesn't happen again. So, like, whatever history has happened, it doesn't occur again. And so I was like, man, that's true. Like, that hits hard for us as, as believers, you know, that, you know, whatever we're walking in, that it shouldn't happen again. And so... Um, you know, in, in this thinking, I was like, man, I don't, I don't like, I don't, like DL hit on sanctions and the inflation. We all know the inflation is going on. We get that. And we see that there's an imbalance. We're paying for the same product, but we're paying a lot more for that product, you know? And so it's not that the product has gained any value. It's just that there's an imbalance. And ask, it makes me wonder how many times is there an imbalance in my life and yours? Is there an imbalance where maybe we feel like something is the way it's supposed to be, but there's actually an imbalance because maybe God's here and we're here, but because we're content with where are we're at and we're satisfied with the level that we've reached because we've maybe surrounded ourselves with people and influences, then maybe that's the, that's the peak of the mountain. And then whenever we surround ourselves with people and situations and circumstances and places and destinations where that represent something much higher than what we're currently standing on, then what happens is we start to become that. In, uh, in, the, the, in going with that same mindset, three weeks ago, was it three weeks ago with the wheat? Three weeks ago, uh, Pastor DL, he brought up a jar of wheat. I'm sure some, several of you can remember that. 
But he brought up a jar of wheat, and he talked about how you would have the, the, you would go a whole day of work, a whole days of work, and all you would get in return for that days of work is a jar of wheat. Now I don't know about you, but I need like a jar of like 16 cheeseburgers or something. Yeah. I mean, make them triple while you're at it, and add some bacon on there too. <laughs> and so the whole jar of wheat for a days of work makes me wonder like, okay, how can we apply the same mindset and the same philosophy in today's world? And you ask yourself, how much do you pay for this Bible? How much do we pay for just a good, good Bible from the store? You know, 10, 20, 30 bucks. Really, there's no imbalance there, okay? Because we're used to that's normal, that's whatever. We pay 20 bucks, we get a Bible, okay? We study the Bible, we read the Bible, we learn about the Bible, we seek what's in the Bible for 20 bucks. That's, that's, that's where we're at. But then that's the now. That's the now. Now think later. Because if you read the scripture, which I know you have, if you read the scripture, you'll know that it says in here for the exact same thing, the exact same product of reading the scripture, of seeking him, to seeking his word, to seeking his face, to seeking what he has to say, the same product, all right, the same value is now going to cost you a lot more. And eventually it's going to cost you your life. At some point, your life is going to be cost just by getting in front of a whole bunch of people like this and reading this word. It says it in Scripture. So much so that, that right now we're paying 20 bucks for it, but at some point, for the same products of the same value, you're going to be paying so much more. Now, with that, that's an economic imbalance. With sanctions, there's four types of them, diplomatic, military, sport, and economic. With sanctions, a political measure that's aimed to demonstrate displeasure with or disapproval of certain actions. Now, if we're to take that same concept, when someone is sanctioned, they're cut off financially, right? I'm sure they feel the effects of that. Well, they can't trade, they can't buy, they can't sell, et cetera, et cetera. But what if that was to happen to me or you and we were cut off spiritually? There was a spiritual imbalance. Meaning God's here, our Father's here, and we're here and there's a cut. I wonder how many times or how many days or maybe how many weeks it, we would, it would take for us to even notice. How many, because we just go through this daily mindset of, oh, oh I'm going to go to church Sunday, I'm going to go to church Wednesday, and in between I'm going to work and I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. And what if we cut off the power source, we cut off the supplier, how many days or how many weeks would it take until we notice that there's a spiritual imbalance taking place in our life and we're cut off from the source? See, you can, you can cut off money, you can cut off us coming to this building. We saw it not too long ago with COVID. They can shut and lock doors. They can keep us from coming to a facility. But what they cannot keep is a relationship that you have with your Heavenly Father. But if you're coming here and you're just seeking the fueling of the Holy Spirit, and you're like, oh, I got to get fueled up on Sunday, which is great. It's a great place to get fueled up at because there's a lot of other places you could be right now. But if you're coming here and you're feeling up here and this is your only place to fuel up your spiritual being, then what's going to happen is, is you're going to get caught when you least expect it. See, when you're going through a spiritual imbalance, I want you to ask yourself, are you here for one of these reasons? You're either here for religion or you're here for a relationship. If you have a relationship with anybody, anybody at all, your relationship is successful the more that you talk, the more that you seek, the more that you um, fellowship, the more interaction you have with that person, that's the greater the relationship's gonna be. But if you're coming here on Sunday or on Wednesday and that's your only time you ever have an interaction with God or even know that there is a God out there that loves you, then that relationship is starting to act like religion. And the government and all that, yeah, he can cut your religion. 
because he can keep you from coming to the doors, but the, this building is not the church. You and I, before we walked in here, this was just a building. It had some walls, it had a ceiling, it had a roof. It was a structure. We are the church. So whenever we're going to say, okay, how is, how is Willow Springs and how is West Plains and how is all these surrounding areas going to be impacted by Jesus, it's probably not going to be like, hey, come to our building. How about our church, which is us, we go to them? Which is what D.L. was just talking about earlier this morning. We're talking about sowing seed. We're called to sow seed. And God has entrusted us with that seed for it to be sown into the lives that are around you and around us and around I. I want you guys to turn to 1 uh, Kings chapter 17 with me. 1 Kings chapter 17, starting with verse 2. Man, I was talking to David earlier. I was like, this is, this is our word. So if you guys hear this, all right, don't listen to Pastor D.L. He don't know how to say it, okay? But, <laughs> yeah. Do you know how to do it now? Still got it wrong. <laughs> if you go to that youth building over there, you'll hear this word. And, and, and this, the screen right here, the setup, because you guys got this screen, I'm like, that's, that's pretty bougie. But then that right there, that's really bougie. If you guys don't know what bougie means, ask an 11 year old. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2, it says, Then the Lord said to Elijah, So God is speaking to Elijah. Go to the east and hide by the Kareth brook, uh, brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded them to bring you food. Now I'm like Pastor D.L. over here. And I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys, fellas, you got to have my back here. The D.L. was on to something earlier. This lettuce, it's not made for this. Okay? It's not made. All right? So if God is going to bring some food to me by a raven, he better have about 12 of them things because I'm telling you, I need some steaks and some cheeseburgers, big, uh, big ones. I mean, my, yeah. yeah, that's right. That better be a big old raven. <laughs> In verse 5 it says, So Elijah did as the Lord God told him and camped beside Kareth Brook east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him food and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. What does that have to do with sanctions? Is you can't sanction God. You can't cut off the supplier. You can't cut off our Heavenly Father. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Today I'm going to read to you something that is not anything profound. It is a, it's a scripture and a parable that you probably heard hundreds of times. But how many of you know that you can read something a hundred times and God's going to give it to you on the 200th time? Matthew 25, starting with verse 1, it says, Parable of the ten bridesmaids, or the ten virgins. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. So right here we see we have five wise, we have five foolish, we have five that are prepared, we have five that are not prepared. The ones that are uh, foolish, they have no fuel. Okay? They have a vessel, they have a lamp, right. they have no fuel. Right. I wonder how many of us are in here in this place this morning that are have a vessel, but you have no fuel. Or maybe, just maybe, God forbid this ever happens to you with a mower or something, but maybe, just maybe, you put the wrong fuel in your vessel. Because the thing is, is when you have a vessel, which is like our good old $55 one gallon of gas, <laughs> gas tank right here, this bad boy right here, oh, two plus gallons, that's good, that'll be $65, all right, this gas tank here has got one year limited warranty, just so you guys know, that's some good stuff right there, and it's probably not made in the United States, okay, uh, so, all right, it's a vessel, just like you and I, we walked in here, we are a vessel, okay? 
Whenever you see this gas tank, obviously you associate it with gas, right? The value of this gas tank is not determined, okay? It, well, let me say this. It is determined by what's inside of it. You and I, our value here this morning is determined by how much or what is inside of us, okay? Our value to this world, do we offer something different and do we offer something that everyone else offers, which is the world? Because the thing is, is your vessel is going to be filled, but it's going to turn, you're going to determine what you fill it with. Are you going to fill it with the God? Are you gonna fill it with the Holy Spirit? Or are you gonna fill it with the, the, the world? Because if you don't purposely fill it with the Holy Spirit, Satan will fill it, whether you like it or not. The wise, they have fuel, and it's just like what DL and several of you say, it's, it's, it's time to be ready, not get ready. The lamps, those are, that is the vessel. Its importance is defined by what it contains. Much like, does anybody here like food? I mean, come on now, something, raise your hands. Does anybody like food? I know everybody's here like, would this big dude up here shut up so I can go get some food? Like, come on now. Amen. Just over here being real, yeah. right? Anybody like pizza? Yeah, yeah I like pizza too. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you're going to see this body running for is some food, all right? I told the first service, I said, you ain't going to see me running from a bear. I got a better chance of fighting that thing. But you put some food in front of me, I'll run after that. Man, especially like a good old cheeseburger. I keep saying that, but it's true. Now, pizza. How, how comfortable, I should say, say you order some pizza. You have it delivered to your house. Pizza man walks up. He's got your pizza right in his hand. No box. It's just slumped over your hand. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, I'm sure it's all greasy and whatnot. Listen, he's got just a pizza in his hand. So here you go. Here's your pizza you order. It was good too. It was good. I got me a bite. I got me a bite. It's good stuff. Now, how willing and how comfortable are you going to be? He said, oh man, thank you so much for that pizza. See, I'm a big dude, I like some food, but I might have to pass on that pizza. Now, we know there's importance with pizza. That's what we pay for. That's what we, we spent the 10 bucks to get is the value that's inside of the box. But the box in and of itself, you won't pay 10 bucks for. You won't pay, you won't pay, say, man, can I just show up to, um, down the road to Pizza Americana and say, listen, I don't want any pizza today. I just want 20 of your boxes. I'll give you 50 bucks for it, all right? You do that, then so be it, I guess. But I'll take your pizza. You can have the box. <laughs> now, the box in and of itself shows no significant value. We show no significant value to our world unless we place fuel inside of us, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, is anybody here want some pizza? I'm like, come on, raise your hand. Want some pizza? Want some pizza? Uh oh, I got one right back here. All right, what's your name? What's your name, buddy? Tristan? Christian. Here you go, buddy. Here's some pizza. Open that box up. Is there pizza inside? What's in there? So raise it up high. What's in there? There's some money in there. Listen, so whenever you identify. Or whenever you're praying, you're like, God, please answer my prayers and please give me what I'm seeking. Please, I'm asking you, I'm seeking, Lord, for whatever this is. He may not give you pizza, but he's going to give you the tools and he's going to equip you for what you need for the battle. Amen. This morning, we're going to go ahead and further on, go on to Matthew 25 and verse 6, 6 through 10. It says, at midnight they were aroused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Verse 9. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. 
Verse 10, but while they were going to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Verses 6 through 9 shows us that in the last days, man, I'm 27 years old, and I don't know how many thousands of times I've heard of the, oh, we're in the last days. We're in the last days. Raise your hand if you've heard that. Oh, yeah. If you ain't raise your hand, you lying to God. It's between you and God. We're in the last days. Which is today? How many of us are living off of someone else's oil? How many of us are, are, are waiting to, oh, DL, get up there so I can refuel? How many of us wait till Sunday so that we can refuel our vessel? Because Monday through Saturday, we're running on empty. See, if you're following religion, you're going to refuel on Sunday, and, but, and that's a great thing. You want to refuel on Sunday. But the difference between the two is, is this is your only fueling station. Your home should be a fueling station. Your work should be a fueling station. Everywhere you go and everywhere you step foot, that should be a fueling station. Your mission is the foundation of your priorities. Got this from leadership class. Examine yourself. What do you have a passion about? What do you care about? What is your heart about? Some of you, it's probably hunting and fishing. Two, games, two things that I try and suck at. <laughs> I just blame it because the fish are scared whenever I walk up on the water. They know, they know what capabilities I have or lack thereof. What are you passionate about? My passion, I, I didn't say it earlier, but I'm a basketball and a football coach. I'm also a sixth grade science teacher. Those are my passions. My passions are kids. My investments is kids. I love kids. Uh, I want to invest in kids' life. You know, and with that same thought, you know, right across that street is the youth building. And there's people in this room, there's people in the last service. that There are amazing leaders that are in that building that are lifting up our kids that are leading them and guiding them. But at the same time, whenever you're in that building, you get to hear and you get to see and you get to be a part of what those kids' lives are about. And if you ever feel like interested in that or, or you want to invest in that, it doesn't have to be in money, but invest in that with your time. Come on Wednesday night. Myself, though, I told you I was a coach. Uh, so this is just a, a personal testimony of mine. Last year, um, I used to be the youth pastor at Pomona Assembly of God, and um, I currently still um, coach basketball, uh, middle school, fifth or eighth, and then coach football as well. And so um, this is about a year ago, um, and just something personal to me is, is I was living in the mindset that my priority was my sixth grade students, because if you're a teacher in this room, or if you know a teacher, they don't go for the pay, they don't go for summer break, they go because they love the kids, and they wanna make a difference in the kid's life. And I had my kids, and I was like, man, that's my goal, that's what I'm here for, I wanna love those kids, I wanna lead those kids. Uh, but then also, I was like, man, I got my basketball team, and I want them to be the best they can be. And I got my football team, and I want them to be the best they can be. And I want to lead them, and I want to guide them, and I want to show Jesus to them. And I was like, man, I have all this stuff going on. This, these were my priorities. And, and whenever you, you hear that, you're thinking, okay, what's the, what's the issue with those priorities? And those priorities in and of themselves aren't the issue. The issue is, is that those priorities were my priorities, and they didn't line up with God's priorities. See, the issue is, is you just heard four really good things that should be a priority. But what happens is, is whenever you place so many priorities in your life, you become a dull blade. And if we're going to be a Christian and we're going to walk this life and we're supposed to make a, da a change and a difference in somebody's life, then the, probably the last thing we want to have is a dull blade. Because what happens is, whenever you have a dull blade... This is just a, a story from yesterday. I was doing chainsaw. Guess what I did? I put the chainsaw on black, uh, backwards. Yeah, it was pretty cool stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, I found it real quick not to. But what happened is, is I was applying a lot of pressure and wasn't nothing happening. 
And what happens is in our walk with God is we apply a lot of pressure because we got so many things and so many focuses and so many ministries and so many things that we want to reach and so many people we want to do and seek, et cetera, et cetera. But what happens is, is we have a dull blade and we are making no difference. None. And we have a spread out focus. We're a candle burning at both ends. And what happens is, is now if you change that, what was wrong with my priorities that I listed a while ago is my wife and my daughter was nowhere near, nowhere near a part of it. I never said family. And my wife checked me a year ago. And she came to me and she said, listen, I love you and I support you. And I think all of these things are great. But where do I fit in? Where do I fit in? That's coming from my spouse. Where does our daughter at the time, six months old, where does she fit in? And if that don't gut check you, I don't know what will. Because in my whole mindset, I'm like, man, you're part of this. This is us. What I had is my priorities were basketball, football, classroom, youth group. Nowhere near was that wife, kid. And so I had to check myself. And I had to examine myself. And what I'm asking from you today, and I'm sharing this for you today, is because maybe what you're doing right now is great. And maybe you have the right intentions, but you're going about each intention with a dull blade. And whenever I wasn't putting my family, the ones that were closest to me, a part of the priority, then what happens is, is that now none of those are getting changed. And if they are, it's for the worse, not the better. And when I changed my focus and I said, I'm just going to be there for my family. And I'm going to love my family. I'm going to love the Lord. What happens is, is because now that I have a sharper focus, a narrower focus, and I'm focusing on my family, I'm focusing on what God has, is that I'm still making a difference in my youth and in my classroom and on my teams. There's still a difference being made, but now I'm making that difference with a sharp blade. Now, some of you may be focusing, you know, priorities with family and some other really good things. But is your, is your priorities, does it line up with the Word of God? Does your priorities line up with God's priorities for your life? You know, with, with the youth, with the youth group that, that we have, and with middle school and high school, man, I, I can't say, I can't say thank you enough to the people that God has put around my family, to the people that God has put around Desley, to the, to the kiddos that, that God has put around Emory, to the men of God that God has put around myself. I can't say thank you enough for the assistant coach that also helps with youth. That when we go in that huddle on game day, man, we are like-minded. We both want to win. But at the same time, he checks me spiritually and he sharpens my iron. So I'm asking you today, who in your life is checking you and sharpening your iron? My priorities were not in alignment with God's. In Matthew 25, verse 10, it says the door was shut and locked. There's going to be things in your life that you have to separate yourself from that will stop hindering you from you and God. See, the wise could have given up their oil. They could have shared. But if they would have shared, then no one would have ever been able to see in Jesus. Sometimes we, myself included, we have so many hands that are in the fire that we, we, we forget to realize how much damage is being caused to ourselves and to the ones we love. In verses 25, 11 through 13, it goes on to say, Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I do not know you. Verse 13, So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. 
with that same mindset, you do not know the day or the hour of my turn. My question for you all is will West, uh, will West Side Family Life Center be prepared? And to make it more personal, will you be prepared for the coming of the Lord? See, it's easy to fake it till you make it. It's easy to follow, to say, just follow what I say, not what I do. Because I feel like so many times we come here as a church and we come here as a body of Christ and we say, you know, we, we go through the motions of, here we got some worship songs and da-da-da and we're going to listen to the message and we're going to go do whatever we want to do. We let the Christian walk stay here and we go do whatever we want to go do. Because if that's you, then you're not really being transparent. And maybe you're shutting the door from things that keep you closer to God. Now, I've heard Pastor D.L. say this several times. It's easy to play church. It's easy to come in here and go through the routine and go through the motions. And it's easy to just come in here and play. But I'm here to tell you personally from a person that has battled suicide, that a person that has battled depression, that a person that has battled some really tough times, a person that has battled some really hard stuff, that Satan ain't playing church. Satan ain't playing around. The opposition's not playing around, but we're over here playing church like everything's okay and everything's hunky-dory. While Satan's running around playing depression, playing suicide, playing doubt, and playing deception. The famous four words that everybody says, I still got time. Until time's gone. In Matthew 24, just backing up. Matthew 24, verse 40 through 44. It says, two men will be working together in the field, and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill, and one will be taken and the other left. Ask yourself today, will you be taken or will you be left? Verse 42, so you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Verse 33, understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. So the I still got time, you don't know what time you got. We have to give God 100%, 100% of the time. You can never allow the enemy a foothold into your relationship. I want you guys to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Now I heard John, John White say this just the other day at Bold Beauty at the girls conference here at Westside. And he was talking to the kids and he was, he was telling them that so many times we try to get in a fight and a battle with each other when it's not about each other. In Ephesians 6, 11, and 12, it says, put on, the full, uh, the God's armor, put on God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Verse 12, for we, we, as in we, the body of Christ, are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We are not fighting against each other. We are not fighting a political battle. We are not fighting Republican and Democrat. We are not fighting, do we go to church and da da da? We're not fighting nothing. We are fighting Satan. Christ, Christians, first Satan. Now, as I'm about to close, I have four points I want to, I want to cover with you. Do I have any football players in the house? Anybody play football? You know something I never did? I never played football. Yeah. Looks like looks like I could have ate a couple football players. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've seen the movie Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. Face based movie. It's a football movie. Awesome movie. I watch it with my basketball team all the time. We watch it usually once a year, once every other year. And this movie is so amazing because it exemplifies the, the point of 100%, 100% of the time. And everybody that's watched this movie knows what I'm about to say. There's a part in this movie where the coach, high school coach, 
was asking his team, his team was huddled up, asking his team, he's saying, oh, we're playing so-and-so on Friday night. You guys think we got a chance of winning? The team captain says, oh, we're playing so-and-so. We ain't got a shot. And I wonder how many of us here in Willow or West Plains or in our areas or in our families or in our workplace, we're telling people they ain't got a shot. There ain't no hope in this place. The coach asked at the very beginning, he says, will you give me your best to his team captain? Now, what he asked his team captain to do was to do a death crawl, right? I asked DL and Aaron if they would, you know, demonstrate what a death crawl is. (laughs) And uh, you can can just kind of assume what DL said. (laughs) And on this death crawl, you basically, you got somebody on your back and basically you're crawling. Okay. Well, this person, I think he was, I think he was 160 pounds, and he's on this kid's back. And the coach said, "I need you to death crawl." And the kid was like, "Okay, cool. I, I can do 10 yards, 20 yards, no problem." And the coach was like, "No, I think I want you to do 50 yards. I want you to go to the 50-yard line." And the kid's like, "There ain't no way I can go to the 50-yard line." And he's like, "I think you can go to the 50-yard line. I know you can." But I want you to go to a point where you cannot give any more. And the second point is, is he puts a blindfold on the kid. And the reason, and and this is where I think this is where we come into the picture, is there's a blindfold put on this kid because he told him to give his absolute best. And for us to give our absolute best, we no longer need to look at the world's guidelines of what the best looks like, but start looking at what Christ says the best is. You know, um, we were up here and um, she was saying that, you know, you, you, we, you just dance and you can just, you can just, you can just girl, whirl around and just and be alone with God and give everything you got to God. Be 100% sold out to him. It doesn't matter what other people say. It doesn't matter what other people think because it's just you and God. And so it's the same instance with this player where he has to give his absolute best on this death crawl. And, he, and the coach says, I'm putting this blindfold on you and I want you to shut the world out is what we have to do. No more distractions. We have to walk by what? Faith. By faith. And we're not by but whenever you have a blindfold on, you can't walk by sight. And maybe some of us, we need to put a spiritual blindfold on to the world and start actually walking by faith. Third point, it says, what talents has God put you in charge of? D.L. was talking earlier about, about this amazing individual that, um, that God has put this on, on this person's heart and, you know, uh, to sow seed. And up until this point, God has entrusted you. In the next parable over, it talks about the, the talents and the, God's given the three servants, the five to the one, and so on and so forth, on base of, based on their ability. And I wonder what God has entrusted you based on your ability in the Word, based on your ability in your family, based on your ability in this church. Somebody is watching you right now. Just think about it. Who is watching you? Now, there's two ways you can go with that. One, you can say somebody's watching me and and they're waiting for me to fail. Yeah, somebody's probably watching you, waiting for you to fail. But there's also people that look up to you. There's people that see you as a leader in their household, see you as a leader, as a person in their workplace. They see you as a leader in this church and they're looking up to you and they're watching every move you make because they want to exemplify you. And if you are following Jesus, then ultimately so are they. So with the same mindset is whenever you step out in faith, how many people are going to get saved because you stepped out in faith? How many people are going to come to know God today, this week, because you took one act, one action, and you stepped out in faith and in boldness And there's so many people that watch you. And they're not going to watch you. They're going to see Jesus. The last thing is athletes aren't determined by only in-game decisions. 
or in-game plays, but what they do behind closed doors. Hashtag, go Jayhawks. They won last night. <laughs> we are all given opportunities based on what God has entrusted us. We're all given the same amount of time. We have 24 hours in a day starting from today. We're all given the same amount of time, but we must be wise whenever we begin to sow seed. We must be wise with what God has entrusted us. We must be wise in what God has put on our plate and not foolish. The seed that DL was talking about a while ago and we'll talk about here in just a moment, the seed that you have an opportunity and I have an opportunity and we have an opportunity to sow, we have to nourish that seed. And there's two things through nourishing it is that we have to be the root. The seed today could be the root for the future of Westside. It could also be the plant for the future of Westside. And through nourishing it, we have to make sure that the roots are in the word. We have to make sure that it's planted in an unending, undeniable relationship with our Heavenly Father and not in this world. This morning, I want to leave you with just one thought and one thought only. And are you giving God your best? And if you are, is that based on worldly standards or is that based on scripture? And then whenever you would give your best, that means you're filling up your vessel with something. And if it's on the world standards, you're filling it up with the world. But if you're giving your best, and you're giving everything you got to God, and you're being refueled by him, that's where we all have to be, and that's what we're called to be here for today. We're called to be as a, a hospital and a church that is, that is all broken, all seeking that refueling. Don't do it alone. If you guys would bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you would have your way over the service this morning. Lord, I pray that right now in our seats, that you would refuel us. Refuel us with your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would remind us that you are in charge. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we just glorify you, Heavenly Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather here in this place. And we just ask, Lord God, that you would strengthen us and that you would give the boldness and allow us to be unashamed of your word. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we glorify you, Heavenly Father God. And we give 100% of ourselves to you 100% of the time. We love you, Heavenly Father God. And we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pastor D.O. Thank you. So I'm confident that there's some folks that need to have a vessel filled here. I had one individual come up to me before service started and said, um, today I want to get my life right with Christ. I mean, oh, that's a really good way to start church. Huh? And... Um, and so we're going to take care of that business right now. But I'm not sure that that's the only person here that wants to make sure that their life is right with Christ. Hmm. We fill our life uh, with so many different things that Richard was talking about. And by the way, uh, bougie or whatever that is, hashtag, I'll keep working on it. Um, we fill our lives with so many different things. And this vessel here, the scripture teaches us this is the vessel of the Holy Spirit. This is the house that God lives in. But it's not so much about this house because at some point this old house is going to write dust to dust, right? That's what's in it. And so, uh, Tony, you ready to go, bub? Come on up here, son. Give him a hand as he comes. He's ready to get it right with Jesus. He come with that intention. So some of the prayer team, come on up. We're going to pray right here. Come on, we're going to get it right.
You're the first one. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your courage. It's a really good day. Come on, Richard. Anybody else who wants to come and pray with Tony? Listen, that's what it's about. Getting it right. Man, it's a really good day. I went to school with his mom and daddy, and I watched him grow up in this church, and then I watched him go a different direction, and I get to watch him come home today. That's a good day. If there's anybody else, right now's the time. I'm not going to wear it out. So I'm going to pray. You can fake it till you make it, but I got a doubt as to whether you might make it or not because faking it ain't going to get you there. Time to go is not time to get ready. So just like the, the old hymn that they're playing, just as I am, right? I can't tell you how many times as a little kid growing up listening to a radio, didn't have a television, George Beverly Shea, Billy Graham crusade, right? Just as I am. You can't come any other way. Well, I got to get right and then I'll come and I'll be good enough. You're good enough now. Come on, don't take, you don't have to take a shower before you get in the bathtub. Amen. So let's pray. If there's anybody else, listen, if there's anybody else, come on, we're going to do it right now. Father God, we love you. I thank you, Lord God, for Tony. Thank you, Lord God. I've known him since he was born, Lord God. What a beautiful day, just like he is. And it's really a simple thing. You said if we would believe in our heart, and we do believe in our heart, that we should confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'd be saved. You didn't complicate it. You don't make it hard. So we come, just as we are. Anybody else that needs to come? Yeah. Amen. Come. Come on. Come on. Some of you ladies. Yeah, come on. Where's Felina at? Fee, would you come? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Man, it's, it's real, right? Somebody else needs to come. God doing His God thing. Come on. Some of you ladies, Mars, some of you guys come play right here. Come on. Anybody else? It's the invitation. You have an opportunity. You need to get it right. Would you, you know whether you are or whether you ain't. Nobody here to condemn. We've all walked this walk and comes another. Need some more. Uh, some more on our prayer team. Rick, would you come? And Hey, Mike, some of you guys come pray right here with this young man. Yeah. Todd, you want to come up, please? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Just going to pray. You come. Somebody's going to come with you. Thanks, Frank. Yeah. Good to spend some time with him in Colorado. Amen. Good stuff. Anybody else? Anybody else? Truth sets us free. Thank you, God. Okay, uh, last call. If you need to get it right with Jesus, right now is the time to come. And then we'll make one more call. Amen. God, you just touch these that have come. Let's pray over them for just a moment, and then we're going to make another call. Father God, thank you for your word that's come forth. Thank you, Lord God, for filling these vessels with new life, new hope. Lord God, we literally step out of darkness and into your glorious light. We step from death to being born again. Names written down in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. So we speak, Lord God, that life over these that have come. Fill these vessels with your love, with your hope, with your word. Fill them with the oil of your Holy Spirit, Lord God the light of your love illuminate their path the entrance of your word brings light 
Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So the next call is this right here. We just keep praying for these right here, and they pray as long as we want to. The next call is this right here. Uh, so, so Will come up and he shared with me. He said, "Listen, I'm I'm where I need to be with God." But man, I've just been under such an attack. Now, attacks come in a lot of different forms, right? They can be mental, they can be emotional, they can be physical, they can be financial, they can be a ton of different ways. Ron got some tough news this week from his doctor. Willie's under attack. Anybody else just say, hey, listen, I'm really under an attack right now, and I would like to have my brothers and sisters pray with me. Just raise your hand up, because I'm going to have people. Listen, pastor's not the only ones to be praying with the prayer team. How many of y'all know you're part of the prayer team, right? So you look around, somebody beside you, raise your hand up. You're gonna, you, your responsibility is to pray for them. Anybody here say, listen, I'm under attack, and you don't have to fill in all the blanks. I'm under attack. I would love for, I'd, I'd love for my brother or sister to stand with me. Just slide your hand up and then hold it there for a minute. All right, here, right here. Anybody else? Right here, Willie. I want some of you to pray with Ron right behind you, Miss Nancy. Right, right here. Some of you pray with Ron right here. We've got a tough diagnosis. How many of y'all know our Jesus is tougher? Amen. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, there's Kenny. Yeah, Lee, thank you. Get in there and pray with Kenny. Yeah. Anyone else? Listen, I don't want anybody. I want you to leave. Listen, don't, I'm not interested in playing church. It's like what, what Richard was talking about. The devil ain't playing, so we, we, we can't either, right? Amen. Some of you guys get in here and pray with Will. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just lift each one of these up to you. We thank you, Father God, those that have come to receive and to fill. Names written down. New life. New start. It was this, but today it changed, and my life has begun new. It's begun again. Thank you, Lord God, for where there was death, dead in sin and trespass, now in my life. Thank you, Lord God. Even under attack, Lord God, you are faithful. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. So thank you, Lord God. Even when we're under attack, you have a plan. You have a meal prepared for us spiritually or physically or emotionally. You have something that will sustain our life. You've prepared a table before us. That table is vast with a variety of food, food for the soul, food for the spirit. So, Lord God, whatever the nature of these attacks are, we speak healing to those that need to be healed, deliverance to those that are in need of deliverance, finances to those in need of finance. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Now, this, this attitude of prayer. If you have need, or you know of someone that has need, okay, the rest of this goes today. So at the end of service, I need you to come and see me. Okay, you come and see me. Thank you, Jesus. Pay a bill to do whatever. What a unique day. What a unique day. If you know someone, we're going to pray for them. God enabling you to go and help an individual. You go and take this and provide for that need and you tell them about the love of Jesus. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God would give you 100%, 100% of the time. We thank you, Lord God. That number five, associated with your grace, with redemption, with the anointing. I pray for the anointing, Lord God, upon your children as they go, as they take this gift to those that are in need. And they just tell the story about the love of Jesus.
God so loved that He gave. And so love gives, and that's what this gift is. So, Lord God, we be your hands and your feet this week. We give you praise. We thank you. We bless you. May there be many thanksgivings come from this. Bring you glory. And the need, the want of the saints. Not just the want of, I want this, but the need, the lack. That they would experience the richness of your grace, of your redemption, and of your anointing. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being at Westside. Thank you for those that have tuned in and watched. Those online, those on internet, those at Channel 36, we love you. Thank you for being with us at Westside today. God bless and have a wonderful day in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.